All right, guys, we have a couple of big boy G-Shocks here. Typically, G-Shocks are squares, 6900s, 2100s. That's what you're going to see usually on my channel. But occasionally, I like to show the big boy ones here. These new colorways with the splash of yellow really got my attention, and I suspect I got a lot of other people's attention as well. So big thanks to Mimo at Mimo's, Mimo's Jewelry in Long Beach, California. Uh, I'll put a discount code down below and uh, direct link so you can go right there if you can check out this ggby or ggb 100 y dash 1a for 380 dollars retail price using the module 559 or 4 or any g-shock or seiko or hamilton or i don't know he carries a bunch of different brands go check them out he's my west coast connection so um let's get into the watch these are large there's no getting around that, right? But it only weighs 93 grams. That's how you get away with wearing some of these large G-Shocks. And that'll be the case here. Unless you have like a massive wrist. In that case, then this large watch isn't going to seem so large. So I measure, to be fair, minus the pushers and the crown guards and everything, I measure the case at 46 millimeter. It's definitely larger than 46. It, I mean, it wears larger than a 46. So if you measure side to side from here to here, it's like 51-ish. And that's probably about how it wears. It wears like about a 50 millimeter watch because it kind of is. The lug to lug, I just kind of grabbed it from these points here, from here to here, is like 54 millimeter. But you can see you have these little butterflies here, those eight in comfort. Plus it has the carbon core uh, guard construction system. So it has this resin on the back. It's very soft and uh, I don't want to say it's soft, but it feels soft on wrist and it's comfortable. It's definitely with these little wings here, helps really wrap around the wrist. It is a thick boy and 19 millimeter, has mineral crystal up top. And like I said, weighs 93 grams. Part of that is obviously the mostly plastic or carbon core construction coupled with you have this whole upper bezel here is actually a carbon fiber. You can kind of see it and it's infused with a little bit of yellow. Uh, pretty slick look if I do say so myself. I love the splash of yellow on this thing. And then this coming from the car world, this looks more like Kevlar. Uh, the car guys will probably know that, but I guess it is carbon fiber. So analog watch, three-handed with a second hand, taking away, nailing the marks perfectly. Well done indeed on that. This is a Master of G. It's the Land Series. It's a Mud Master. There is some downsides to this one that I'm a little confused about. One, um, it's not solar. It's actually battery powered. So as a two year battery life and the battery is a CR2025, I'm not sure how you change the battery. So I don't know if you take the strap off the case and then this prize off or what, or do you have to send it in to be done? I'm not 100% sure on that aspect of it. Um, I hope that a battery change can be done by the owner and not have to be sent in. I'm not 100% sure on that. It is Bluetooth. There is no multi-band. So um, with that Bluetooth connection, you're going to get an insane amount of accuracy with the watch. You're also going to get a step counter in here. So if you want to keep track of your steps and all that good stuff, you can record and keep track of, they say like missions, but whatever, hikes or something like that. You can kind of keep track of that in the app. It does have a few different sensors built into it. You can see it says sensor right there. It has a compass, altimeter, barometer, uh, thermometer, the step counter. Uh, also has a sunrise and sunset, which is based on, you know, where you set the time zone to. And then it's by the date. So it, those are all things that are kind of pre-calculated. So if we run through the functions real quick, um, I'm not going to go into extreme detail on it, but you can kind of see easy to read there and then it right now is currently uh showing the date friday february 17th which isn't correct it's not set for when i'm videoing this but you, i guess you don't really care so there's the barometer it gives you a little graph gives you a readout um let's see if we hit it again it'll actually give you your temperature currently it's in celsius not fahrenheit i believe you can switch that uh, there's the record function. I've never used that on any G-Shock or any watch. So if you chime in in the comments, have you ever done the record thing? Like what do you what do you use it for? And I guess where is it practical? I, don't, I, don't, I really don't know. I don't have a, um, a use for like most of these functions. 
So there is your, if we can move that minute hand, you can see there's the display on the digital part where it's showing the um, sunrise and sunset. So, but again, it's set for a totally different time zone than where I'm at. There's your stopwatch. That's going to be a standard function on that guy. You have a countdown timer as well. You have multiple alarms. You have a world timer so you can track a second time zone. And then back to the time. So pretty simple functions. You can go direct to, like I just hit that button, it went right to the um, altimeter and barometer. And then you hit it again and it'll put the display into the time instead of the, uh, and then the day date. And then uh, there's your step counter. And then if you hit it again, it puts you back to how most people are gonna have it displayed. It's gonna tell you the day and then the date. Now, if you quick hit these, that'll take you to your altimeter. Okay, this one up here takes you to the compass. And then you just kind of rotate it around, I'll tell you what degree you're at, and it'll point north. Basic, basic stuff like that. Um, and then you just hit that quick back to the time. You hit this to connect to your Bluetooth. And then this one, conveniently down here, all these buttons are pretty easy to hit. Uh, you can hit that guy and it'll light up like crazy. But we'll do that at the tail end of everything. So let's pop this on wrist real quick so you can see what it looks like on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. I forgot to take this little uh, cover off, but I'll just I'll just hold it. So you can see there, um, obviously a big watch on a seven and a quarter inch wrist, it wears ex like uh, deceptively comfortable, we'll say because it is so light, and like I said, it just contours around the wrist. I could easily pull this watch off. Uh, definitely in the summertime, in the wintertime with cuffs, it's gonna get challenging because of its 19 millimeter thickness. All right, let's kill the lights and give this thing a blast. There is a little bit of loom on the hour, minute, and seconds, but oddly enough, they chose not to really loom up the rest of the Arabics and everything and the markers. I think that's a missed opportunity indeed, but that insanely bright LED just lights up everything. You can clearly see it. So there you go. There's a quick look at the Mudmaster.